Hey everyone, in this video we are going to finish up section 2.4b which is about the unit circle. So in the last part we derived the entire unit circle, now we're going to actually do some stuff with it, okay? So in this example we are going to state the sine, either positive or negative, of sine, cosine, and tangent for values of t within the interval, okay? So when we're looking at this, like the 0 to pi is talking about this, uh, let me just, just redraw this, okay? We're going from 0 to pi over 2. Here we have pi. Here we have 3 pi over 2. And then we're back around to 2 pi. Okay, so that's in radians. So for the first part, um, when we're in this interval, we're stating the sine of sine, cosine, cosine, secant, tangent, cotangent, things like that. Okay, within this um, part. So I might actually just relabel these as quadrants, okay? So like this is quadrant 1. Um, here's quadrant two, so that's from pi over two to pi. <coughs> um, this is quadrant three, which is pi o, o, pi to three pi over two. And then quadrant four is our last one from three pi over two to two pi. Okay, so we're gonna state the sine of each of these, okay? So I might just draw a little triangle, okay? <coughs> Um, since we know that we're talking about the unit circle, our hypotenuse is always going to be 1. And so in this case, it doesn't really matter um, what our reference angle is here. We're really more just thinking about what the sine of this point is. Okay, So in quadrant 1, I know that we have positive x values and positive y values. Okay, So when we're talking about sine, and I'm going to mainly focus just on these, the three main ones, because I know that cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just three separables, and sine's not going to change even though the, you know, the fraction flips or whatever. Um, when we're looking at the sine, okay, so I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, So in this case, our opposite side is positive, well, our hypotenuse is always positive, so a positive divided by a positive is a positive. Okay, same thing for cosine. Cosine is going to be um, the adjacent, which is positive, over the hypotenuse, which is 1, which is positive, so that's positive. And then tangent, we know, is opposite divided by adjacent, positive over positive, <coughs> is a positive. Okay, now we're going to go and move into quadrant 2. Okay, so in quadrant two, now we're looking at a point over here. Okay, I know that my hypotenuse is still one. And then in quadrant two, I know that I have positive y values, but negative x values. So when I'm looking at sine, the sine ratio, wherever we are in this quadrant, well, I know that my opposite is positive, um, and my hypotenuse is still positive. Okay, so we're still looking at a positive value. For cosine, cosine's my adjacent. Well, here's my reference angle. My adjacent's now a negative number. So I have a negative divided by a positive, which is a negative. And then tangent is going to be my opposite over adjacent. So that's a positive divided by a negative. Tangent is negative in this quadrant. Okay, quadrant three. I'm moving over here. <clears throat> okay. So we, de we decided we had negative x values. We also have negative y values and a positive hypotenuse. So um, looking at sine, we're going to have an opposite that is negative, a hypotenuse that is positive. So we have a negative sine value here. Okay, we still have a negative over positive for our cosine, which is negative. And then for tangent, well, if our opposite is negative and our adjacent is negative, well, that actually ends up being a positive value. And then in quadrant four, Okay, we established that we have positive x values, <clears throat> we have negative y values, and a hypotenuse of 1. So our sine is going to be a negative divided by a positive, which is negative. Okay, our adjacent, again, here's our reference angle. Our adjacent now is this positive, so a positive divided by a positive hypotenuse is positive. And tangent, okay, is a negative opposite divided by a positive hypotenuse. Well, that's going to be a negative as well. Okay. Um, and like I said, cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. So like, for instance, cosecant in quadrant four would be a positive divided by a negative. Well, that still is going to give me a negative. Okay. So those are grouped together because the reciprocals don't really matter. So I noticed that here, um, each of these ratios is positive in two quadrants and is negative in two quadrants. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind. <clears throat> okay. Let's go ahead and flip over our page. 
In this example, we're going to determine the sine um, of the given value without the use of a calculator. So I know that we could use our calculator and plug it in, but we actually should know how to do it without it. Okay, so let's draw ourselves a picture. So cosine of 325 degrees. Well, I'm in degrees. Okay, so I have 0 degrees here, 90 degrees here, 180 degrees here. 270 degrees here and then we're back to 360 degrees here okay so 325 is going to be somewhere in between 270 and 360 oh my gosh what was that line let's try that again okay close enough it doesn't have to be perfect so that's going all the way around here okay since we're talking about cosine i do know that i need to draw myself a right triangle so it's going to be somewhere in here okay so we're talking about this point here okay we just need to determine the sine value of this, okay? So if I'm looking at this point here, I know that my x coordinate is going to be a positive value, my y coordinate is going to be a negative value, and we're still thinking unit circle, let's, let's call our hypotenuse 1, but it actually doesn't matter because we saw that it always reduces down to the same thing, so I could have a hypotenuse of 1, I could have a hypotenuse of 14, doesn't really matter, okay? But I know that whatever my hypotenuse is, is going to be positive. So if I'm talking cosine, well, I know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Here's my adjacent, here's my hypotenuse. So we have a positive over a positive, which is a positive value, okay? And if you want to, plug this into your calculator, make sure you're in degree mode, see if you get a positive number out. Okay, we're going to take a look at our second one, okay? ourselves a new picture um we're gonna have tangent of seven pi over five all right okay so we're in radians this time so here's zero radians here's pi over two radians pi radians three pi over two etc okay um well from our unit circle that we had before all of our unit circle denominators were like pi over three, we had pi over four, and we have pi over six. Okay, so pi over five isn't really either one of those, but we can kind of estimate where we think it would be. So for instance, if I thought of this pi as being um, some sort of radian with a denominator of five, I know that this would be five pi over five. Similarly, let's go ahead and convert this three pi over two into a denominator of five. Um, I think that I would need to multiply by 2.5 over 2.5. So that's going to give me that's going to convert 3 pi over 2 into 7.5 pi over 5. So if we're looking at 7 pi over 5, it's going to be slightly to the left of this. It's going to be, I don't know, somewhere here. Close enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a triangle. Okay, um... Knowing just what we know about this point here, since we're in quadrant three, I'm gonna have a negative x value, I'm gonna have a negative y value, and a positive hypotenuse, or a positive radius. So, um, since we're talking about tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Um, so my opposite is negative, my adjacent is also negative, but a negative divided by a negative is a positive value here. Okay. Again, go ahead, type this into your calculator, convert yourself back into radians before you do that. Um, but we should get a positive number out. Probably some crazy decimal, but a positive one. Okay. Now for concept six, we're going to evaluate without using a calculator by using ratios of a reference angle. So what our goal is right now is to figure out what that number would be if we were to type this into our calculator. Okay. And we're going to do that though without the calculator. So we don't need it anymore. Okay, example A, we have secant of 120 degrees. Well, so first of all, let's just think about what we know about secant. I know that secant um, is hypotenuse over adjacent, which is really just the reciprocal of cosine. So I might think about this as 1 over cosine of 120 degrees. Okay. Um, with this, let's go ahead and draw ourselves a little picture. I'm going to say that a lot. Okay, so let's see, because here we have 0, 90, 180, so 120 is going to be going this way here. <coughs> okay, so that means that if I go ahead and draw my triangle, my triangle is going to be here, and so if I need to think about what my reference angle is, well, 120 is what got me there, but my reference angle is actually this value in here, so I think that's going to be 60. Okay, 
Um, one thing that we are going to do right now, I know that we could do this with the 120 degrees, but I'm actually going to encourage us to think about this in radians because we're going to start using radians a lot more. So it's high time we get comfortable with it. Okay. So 120 degrees is equal to, if you remember from your unit circle, that's two pi over three radians. Okay. Regardless, we're kind of going back and forth between here. Um, we do have that 60, 30, 60, 90, 60 degree focus angle, um, special right triangle. So if I label my side lengths, I know that my, if we're talking unit circle, our hypotenuse is one. <clears throat> okay. Um, we've got square root of three over two and then one half here. So if we are looking for cosine of this, well, cosine is our adjacent divided by our hypotenuse. So our adjacent is going to be one half. Our hypotenuse is one. Okay. So I'm going to come over here. One over cosine of two pi over three is equal to one over, okay, our cosine ratio was one half over one. Well, one half divided by one is just one half. So one over one half, which, okay, if you multiply by the reciprocal should be two. Now, as I wrote this, um, I did notice that I made a little mistake. Did you catch what that was? Hopefully you did. Um, remember that when we are looking at these angles, this one half, well, what quadrant are we in? We're in quadrant two. So this is a negative one half. So all of my one halves should be negative. So I'm going to guess that secant of 120 degrees is negative two exactly. And you could use your calculator to double check that. Okay. Looking at example B, so example B, we have tangent of 7 pi over 4, and we're going to evaluate. Okay, so here we go. So we're in radians, so I have 0 radians, pi over 2 radians, pi radians, 3 pi over 2 radians, and then 2 pi radians. Okay, so if we're in, um, in terms of pi over 4, well, 1 pi over 4 is here, 2 pi over 4 is here, here's 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. Okay, so 7 pi over 4 is in this fourth quadrant. Notice we are in radians, so we're not going to switch this in degrees, okay? We are going to stay in radians. So, um, thinking about our unit circle, we want to think about, okay, well, what are the measurements? What are our distances here? Well, I'm pretty sure that this point here is square root of 2 over 2 and then negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay, and if you need to use your or your unit circle, go ahead and double check it. But yep, looks like we're good right there. Okay. So if we're looking at tangent, I know that tangent is going to be our opposite over our adjacent. Okay. So coming in here. Um, that means that our opposite side is that negative square root of 2 over 2, because that was our y-coordinate. Um, our adjacent is square root of 2 over 2, because that's... Wait, no, negative square root of 2 over 2 is our opposite. I hope that's what I said. Square root of 2 over 2 is our adjacent. Um, anyways, so tangent is going to be uh, opposite negative square root of 2 over 2, divided by our adjacent, which is square root of 2 over 2. Well, I see that I have the same number being divided, so this is going to divide to be negative 1. All right. Um, example C, I do want to do all these examples um, just so we kind of get the hang of it and then we'll practice more in class. <clears throat> okay. Example C says cotangent of 5 pi over 3. Okay, so remember cotangent is just the reciprocal of tangent. So we're looking at 1 over tangent of 5 pi over 3. Okay, let's figure out where that is. Draw yourself a little picture. Okay, so 5 pi over 3, I always kind of like to think about that, well, like 6 pi over 3 is equal to 2 pi, so 5 pi over 3 is just 1 pi over 3 below that, right? So we're down in here. So here's our triangle. Okay, um, since we're looking at pi over 3s, um, that is going to be our point here, um, square root of 3 over 2 at negative 1 half, okay? So that means that our adjacent side is square root of 3 over 2. Our opposite side is negative 1 half. <coughs> okay, so 
if I know that tangent is opposite over adjacent, um, I know that cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Okay, so in this case, our adjacent, I'll write this over here. Our adjacent is square root of 3 over 2. Our opposite is negative 1 half. Okay, so multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. Let's see if that's going to give me square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over negative 1. Our 2 is reduced, so this is equal to negative square root of 3. All right. Last one that we're going to look at in this example um, is cosecant of pi. And so I know that cosecant is really the reciprocal of 1 over sine. Okay, so if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then I'm going to have hypotenuse over opposite. Draw yourself a picture. So pi is over here, okay? And so, hmm, you're probably looking here and you're like, well, we don't actually have a triangle, right? We have our hypotenuse. We, we don't have a hypotenuse, right? We just have this. Well, in this case, let's start to maybe kind of think about this in terms of, in terms of some broader things that we've looked at, okay? So for instance, let's look at the, at the part up above, okay? I knew that when I set up my opposite, my opposite kind of corresponded with what my y value was, right? Whereas my adjacent followed what my x value was. I'm going to see if that's true here. Well, it looks like my opposite, again, was my y value. My adjacent was my x value. Hmm. And my hypotenuse, what was, what was my hypotenuse for everything? My hypotenuse was always that unit circle 1. So in this case, if I think about where this point is, well, this point is negative 1, 0, right? So I can kind of define my values in terms of my opposite and adjacent, even though I don't actually have a triangle, okay? So what that means is negative 1 is my adjacent. 0 is really my opposite. And my hypotenuse is really 1, because we're talking unit circle, right? That's that unit circle distance of 1. My radius is 1. Well... I don't want to necessarily make an equal sign. I'm going to do this here, okay? Um, my hypotenuse is 1. And what is my opposite value? Well, it's 0. Can you divide 1 by 0? I don't think you can. So in this case, this value is undefined. Whew, okay, that was a lot. So... In this video, we looked at evaluating some of our different trig functions. Now, I will say that one thing that we're going to start looking at um, in class next time is maybe some of these like little, I don't want to say necessarily shortcuts, but some other patterns that we can emerge between the relationship between sine, cosine, um, and tangent and our x and y values, okay? So start to kind of look for maybe some values that we can help us out along the way. Okay, that's it for this video. I will see you all.